All right, let's talk a little bit more about microphones. There's an attribute for microphones they call polar pattern, which defines how a microphone hears what it hears. And generally speaking, in choir miking, we're often presented with cardioids and hypercardioids. Which one should we choose? Well, they'll both do a great job. Um, so like the 60 degree cone we were talking about earlier, that mm -hmm. would be an example of a cardioid microphone. And typically that's what I use if I'm able to use them, if I have them. Um, a time when I might use a hypercardioid microphone would be, you know, if I want to get a little closer to the source because I, maybe I have a little louder stage, I got an organ or a drum set or something on stage that I'm trying to, you know, hear my choir over. Okay, so the cardioid mic is pretty much your go-to uh, polar pattern for choir mics. Provides you with that 60 degree cone of sensitivity that picks up uh, two or three rows of singers. But the hypercardioid might be important to you if you have a loud stage sound and maybe a loud drummer or a church organ to the, to the side of you mm -hmm. where you want to make sure you're just focusing in on the singers, right? Correct. Okay, so we talked about how with a choir of up to 20 vocalists, you can get away with just one microphone. Pretty simple. What happens if you have a larger choir? You're going to need more microphones. And I'd imagine that the placement of those microphones is going to be critical. There's a rule, another rule of thumb for you, called the three to one rule. Travis, would you describe that for us? Sure, uh, the three to one rule is a basic rule that every sound engineer uses on a daily basis. Even if you don't know you use it, sometimes you do. Mm. Uh, it's important to use it for how far to space microphones apart when you're miking a choir or an orchestra or strings or whatever you're miking. For instance, if you're miking a choir, say the choir mic is three feet away from the closest vocalist. The three to one rule is basically telling us that the next microphone should be at least three times that distance or at least nine feet away from that microphone so that it's not picking up the same group of people. So that's to remove phasing and comb filtering, right? Exactly. That's to get the microphones far enough apart that they act independently picking up your choir. How would you know if your choir is out of phase? What does it sound like? Well, it's, to me, I typically think it sounds kind of thin. You can hear frequencies missing in the mm -hmm. mix. So a good way to kind of experiment with that would be to set up one microphone and then set up another microphone kind of too close and have somebody move it down while you're listening. And you would eventually hear all the sound there and the mics will be working independent of one another. Okay, so yes, if you have a rehearsal, perhaps, mm -hmm. you can be up at the board listening with headphones on, soloing those channels, and have an assistant move those microphones closer and further away and just hear when the sound aligns up and becomes fuller, mm -hmm. um, gains those low frequencies again, and you're pretty much assured that you're in phase at that point and probably abiding by the three to one rule, right? Yeah, and once you kind of know what that sound sounds like, you'll be able to tell in the future when you have a problem and then you'll be able to adjust your microphones accordingly. To review, a cardioid polar pattern is the pattern most often used for miking the choir using the equidistant miking technique we've described. It's perfect for capturing a two to four row choir. Hypercardioid polar patterns can be beneficial in situations where you need additional rejection of nearby sounds, such as drums or other instruments. For larger choirs, try to maintain a ratio of just one microphone for each group of 20 vocalists. Use the 3 to 1 rule when using more than one microphone to mic a sound source. Place your second microphone a minimum of three times the distance of the first microphone to the first row. This will help avoid phasing issues.